up the abdominal cavity and we're going to do so by making a few cuts. We are going to be cutting right up close to the um, mammary papilla up here and we're going to be cutting kind of a, a circular cut that goes in this direction and we're going to cut another one down below the umbilical cord towards the legs. We'll also be making a cut down the midline above the umbilical cord and we'll be making kind of a key shaped cut around the umbilical cord. Now I'm going to start making my incision. One of the things you want to make sure that you do is you never cut towards yourself. So I'm going to start up above the umbilical cord and I'm going to cut away and these scalpels can be very sharp. So you can see that I'm very lightly moving the scalpel and you can start to see the skin separate. So at this moment, as you start to see the skin separate, it's important that you're paying attention to how deep the incision is going to be. And you just keep going over the same spot repeatedly. And be sure that you use your tools to kind of gauge. Now this pig is quite developed and so it will um, have a thicker skin and as I'm peeling back the layers or just kind of using the tweezers to to move them side to side I can see that there's still some film there. Some of you if your pigs are quite small you will not need to um, cut as much as I'm having to do with this particular pig. So I don't know if we can get a shot. Of this, but maybe I can go a little bit deeper. So I still see a film there and I'm trying not to cut it so you can see the peritoneum or the peritoneum, which is a film that actually separates the skin from the abdominal cavity. So again, we don't want to cut deep towards ourselves. Place the pig in the tray and orient the tray any way you like. And as you cut through skin and muscle, you will come across the peritoneum, which is the lining that covers all of the organs located in the abdominal cavity. Okay, so you can see we've made some cuts here and I purposefully did not cut all the way through this film here that you see. And this film is the peritoneum and some people pronounce it peritoneum. Here's the film that we were talking about. And now that I see how, how thick it is, I can take my scissors and I can cut that film. So I'm again, and the liver's very delicate, so I'm not poking it or anything, but I am gonna take my scissors and cut through that. Oops, now I'm gonna take my tweezers. And again, I'm trying to do left and right-handed things together and I'm going to kind of try to cut through that. So there's a couple of other things I need to mention at this moment and that is the umbilical vein. So the reason we wanted to make like a keynote cut around the umbilical cord, excuse me, that you can see here, we wanted to be able to pull on the umbilical cord and see the vein. So you can see that we still have some of that film that we were mentioning before. So I need to cut that film, but here is my umbilical vein. So I'm gonna snip that, those two structures, I'm gonna snip through that film. And now we have opened up the abdominal cavity quite a bit. And I'm also going to take and cut this vein. Now once I cut that, it's going to allow me to move the umbilical cord back, but it will allow me to expose the arteries. So if you can see on 
either side of the structure we just cut, my gloves are too big, on either side of what we just cut, you can see we have an artery. And there's one on this side as well. It's kind of covered up, but there it is. Okay, at this point we have uh, the abdominal cavity mostly open. And you can see that there's a cut that's been made that almost opens this like a book. So once I've snipped that umbilical vein and I can move it back, I can use my scalpel to make it cut this direction or the scissors. At this moment, I would prefer to use the scissors because we can see exactly how deep we're going. We can see that thin film again, that peritoneum, which is here. You can see the layers of muscle. And again, many of your pigs may not be quite this developed, so you won't see that amount of muscle there. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna take my scissors and I'm gonna cut through this skin and this muscle and this peritoneum, and I'm gonna cut just down to the left. And I'm gonna cut it in such a way that I can open um, my specimen like a book. And so I should be able to open this right up. And when I do, I can see several structures immediately. I can see my liver. It's the largest internal organ in the body, your skin being the largest organ, but it's external. Can you get a good shot up here? Because what we can see is this dome looking structure right there, and I'll lift up, lift this uh, piglet up so you can see that we're looking at this structure here, and this structure um, is a muscle, it's the diaphragm. So it's separating your, um, excuse me, your abdominal cavity, from your thoracic cavity, and we don't want to dissect. So notice how far down your cut should be when you're actually cutting into the abdominal cavity. So we can see where our vein was. There it is again. That was attaching to the umbilical cord. We have several structures we can see right away. And we have our intestines, and we'll talk about our small intestines and other things, and large intestine as well. We see this greenish curly cue structure here we see a flap here and we see some connective tissue and we see that we can lift up our liver and take a look which we will in just a moment okay so as we mentioned this is the liver it's the largest organ this is our umbilical vein so what i'm going to do first is locate the gallbladder and the gallbladder you'll be able to find under the liver so we'll have to do a little bit of navigating here for you to be able to see that but again you can see the umbilical vein and I'm not sure how well you can zoom in there to be able to see that but I'll try to get my hands out of the way and you can see this little structure here is that showing up on the video that structure that sac, uh, sac or bag is the gallbladder and so lots of people have their gallbladders removed today um, because they have gallstones. Now, one of the things that we're gonna try to take a look at a little bit later are some of the ducts. Let's see if we can see them now, and if not, as I move things around, we will look at them. So we'll have to zoom back in again. Um, so what we're seeing here is the stomach, and if I push the stomach down a little bit, I can start to see that there's like, they look like fibers almost coming off of the gallbladder and then there's another one going up into the liver. So you have a hepatic duct that's going up into the liver and you have a cystic duct that goes up into the gallbladder. Where those two ducts meet is the common bile duct. So the gallbladder is responsible for storing bile. The liver produces it. So as the gallbladder stores bile, bile helps us actually emulsify and break down fats. So that bile is gonna go into the small intestine. So it's gonna get there from the common bile duct. Now the common bile duct is gonna deposit its contents into the small intestine. So that's gonna take us to the next couple things we need to take a look at. Okay. So as we said, this is our stomach, and our stomach has obviously the esophagus is gonna travel down 
and it's gonna travel through the diaphragm. Sorry, you can't really see that, but you can't really see the esophagus from here. But where you see the diaphragm connecting to the liver, you're gonna notice that there's a, a tube there, and you won't actually be able to see it, but it's the esophagus, and it's going to come through, and as we make more cuts later, you'll be able to see that. It's gonna to connect to the stomach. So at one end of the stomach, close to the esophagus, so where the esophagus meets the stomach, we call that the cardiac valve. And the valve opens and allows food to enter the stomach. Now that food enters the stomach and it churns and turns into a liquid that we call chyme. And that chyme is very acidic. That chyme is going to leave the stomach and it's gonna actually end up into the small intestine. So it's gonna be dumped there. Now if you look at the stomach real carefully, you're gonna notice that it has this like bulbous structure there at the end of it. That's another valve. So we, we will open that and take a look at those valves. And that valve allows food to pass from the stomach into the small intestine. So if you can see that, it becomes the small intestine. Well, what did we say about the gallbladder? It is responsible for producing bile and that bile is gonna also be released into the small intestine. Um, that helps us digest fats. But we also have this other structure. If I lift the stomach up, so I lift the liver, I lift the stomach, and I see this structure here. So I see this green part. So this is my large intestine. And when I kind of stick a probe, maybe something pointy through the film, so this is all connective tissue, I can start to see there's something back there that has, it almost looks like it has ridges on it. And I don't know how well we can get in there or how much I can depress this other material down for you to be able to see that. But what we see right here is the pancreas. And if your pig is a smaller pig, it's gonna be really small, but it's gonna have that look to it, that mottled look, it's a gland which is why it looks that like that. And the pancreas is responsible for secreting insulin to lower our blood sugar and glucagon, which helps us raise our blood sugar. So if I place all of this stuff back, kind of the way that it was when we first opened our abdominal cavity, just to give you an idea of what you're looking at, your liver, your stomach is there. This is our spleen coming over to the side here. We have our small intestine, and our large intestine. This is actually called the spiral colon. The large intestine is more than this. It's more of the greenish structure. And if I lift all of these items up, if I lift up the structure of the large intestine, and I'm gonna use my finger here to kind of move that over. I'm gonna lift up some more, some more of the intestine. You can see you had a lot of intestine there. I'm gonna keep lifting that up. And if I follow this spiral colon down, I'm gonna find a dead end there. I don't know if you can tell that that's a dead end, but that's the cecum. So the small intestine is held together by, it's all coiled in there as you can see, and it's got all of these little vessels. And we've only injected our pigs with red plastic dye, which is why you see red color and you don't see any blue because they were not injected with that. But everything is held together by this mesentery. So I can actually um, show you how thin that is. It's just a really thin film and it's holding everything together. So all of these intestines, no matter where I look, I see this mesentery. Now, if we think about structure and function at this point, our small intestine, if you look at it, it looks really long. There's a lot of it in there. And all of that small intestine is responsible for absorbing nutrients. So the longer it is, the farther the food has to travel, the more nutrients will be absorbed. People who have gastric bypass surgery actually have large portions of their small intestine bypassed, and that means they don't absorb a lot of nutrients, which allows them to lose a lot of weight. But for the rest of their lives, they'll likely be taking vitamins, a large dose of vitamins and protein because they're not able to absorb as much.